G'day mate, Forty here. So, <clears throat> I think uh, YouTube is down. Can can anyone even uh, see me right now? Can anyone even hear me? Am I even there? Who am I talking to? I think I'm just talking into the void. Sad. So, how long has uh, YouTube been down? Can you can you pull it up on an app? So, Ron Uns has a theory. No, nothing's coming up. And uh, his theory about... Oh, here we go. So apparently, on a, on a mobile app, perhaps you can, you can see YouTube. Okay, you can see, you can see YouTube on, on a mobile app. All right, so Ron Uns has a theory that... <laughs> that COVID is a is an American intelligence bio-warfare attack. Now, I, I just want to say, to be very clear, I think this theory is absolutely insane, along with many other Ron Uns articles, I think are absolutely insane. And this is very different from saying Ron Uns is insane. I'm saying something that he's written is insane. And then another thing that he's written, I think is insane. So he consistently produces just wacky, useless, just insane posts. But not saying he's insane, but his latest is the tide finally starting to turn on COVID as an American bio warfare attack. So he says, during the last 18 months, I've stood nearly alone on the Internet and arguing that late 2019 COVID outbreak began in Wuhan, China, was probably <clears throat> the result of an American bio warfare attack conducted by rogue elements of our own national security establishment. All right, this is insane. Do you know why Ron Owens is alone in this? Because this is so out there that, that no one else would, would go out there. So he says, the individual articles in my long series have been viewed some 350,000 times. Yeah, you can get a lot of attention if you're saying crazy things. And uh, now he's finding support from the conservative treehouse. Wow, there's a reliable source. The conservative treehouse. Wow. Ron Owens has really lost lost the plot. Mm -mm -mm. Right, I've had this growing <clears throat> discuss with much of the American populist right and uh, Brian Stelter, er, no, Eric Wemple has a good op-ed in the Washington Post giving more reasons why I'm so contemptuous about uh, much of uh, right-wing populism these days. So what's the New York Times of the right? Well, it's the New York Times. So Brian Stelter at CNN talked on a recent show that we should distinguish between reporters, people who actually dig for new information, and repeaters, meaning people who simply aggregate information. So into the latter category, repeaters you find Fox News, all right? Fox doesn't do very much individual reporting. It does a lot of repeating. So then Stoughter asks, why aren't there massive American newsrooms dedicated to journalism from a conservative point of view? Why isn't there a New York Times of the right? Well, there is a New York Times of the right, and that's Eric Wemple, and it is the New York Times, right? So when right-wingers want to cite authoritative journalism, they have to cite the New York Times. I don't know how you keep up with the news and not read the New York Times. It's simply head and shoulders, the best English language newspaper in the world. And it's not even close. It's twice as good as its closest competitors, such as the Wall Street Journal and uh, the Washington Post. Just the quality of the writing in the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post doesn't come close to what's consistently offered in the New York Times. So. This past summer, Tucker Carlson talked on The Five about his media diet. He says, oh, I gave up my New York Times and Washington Post subscriptions because they're just garbage, right? They're just stupid and boring, right? So Tucker Carlson, too cheap to, to pay for subscriptions to the New York Times and the Washington Post, keeps, uh, keeps citing the New York Times garbage reporting as an authoritative source whenever it's convenient to do so. Right? So many times since he blasted the New York Times on the five, he keeps relying on the New York Times. So August 13, he quoted a New York Times story on Afghanistan from 2015 about rampant sexual abuse of children. Now that's long been a problem in Afghanistan. August 21, 
Tucker Carlson pointed to a recent New York Times story headline, Intelligence Warned of Afghan Military Collapse, Despite Biden's Assurances. September 17, he highlighted video investigation by the New York Times into a U.S. drone strike in Afghanistan. September 20th, Tucker Carlson credits the New York Times for forcing the Biden administration to admit that a drone strike killed a number of innocent people. September 22nd, he quotes the New York Times report on a housing law in California. SB 9 essentially ends single-family zoning. September 28, Tucker Carlson cites New York Times as vindicating what we said months ago, that FBI operatives were deeply involved in the events of January 6. Now, let's be real, the New York Times article did not vindicate, vindicate Tucker Carlson's previous contentions. Have I heard of an app called Ground News? No, I have not. It is free, it is nice, because it shows the media's bias in coverage of a given story. Interesting. Uh, October 4, Tucker Carlson cited December 2020 New York Times story questioning Anthony Fauci about the changing resistance thresholds for the country to acquire herd immunity. So the New York Times, Tucker Carlson says, their job is to report the news. All right, so like many conservatives, Tucker Carlson says, oh, the New York Times is garbage, but whenever it makes a point that's convenient to him, of course he's gonna cite it. And this is not just Tucker Carlson, like Sean Hannity all the time, citing the New York Times. Howard Kurtz at Fox cites the New York Times. Fox host Steve Hilton cites the New York Times. Host Shannon Breen credits the New York Times. Guest host Mike Emanuel credits the New York Times. Brett Baer is always citing New York Times. Host Maria Bartiromo crediting New York Times. Jesse Waters, Janine Pirro citing New York Times whenever it's convenient. So, Eric Wemple makes the point when the when Fox News isn't citing the New York Times as an authority, the authority in journalism, right, is seeking to reduce that authority. So Tucker Carlson will call New York Times the Praetorian Guard, protecting a corrupt establishment. Mark Levin says it's a propaganda organization, it's just an appendage of the Democratic Party and the deep state. No, it's not. New York Times is a left-wing publication, and once you understand that bias, you can read it to your benefit. So it's not a propaganda organization. It's less of a propaganda organization than Fox News. And Fox News is simply recycling other people's reporting primarily. So this, this posture by, by Fox News that, oh, you know, we decry the New York Times, we're above the New York Times, but then always eagerly citing the New York Times when it's to their benefit is uh, cynical and destructive. The best that can be said for Fox News, writes Eric Wemple, is it does nothing to hide its two-faced simultaneous effort to drag down and pivot off a vibrant news source. And Fox viewers appear just fine with it. A good op-ed there by Eric Wemple. And then back to the John Gruden story from last night. So in the NFL's investigation into the toxic environment at the Washington football team, they uncovered something like 600,000 emails, but somehow only John Gruden's get brought to life. Like if the NFL investigated the emails of its other coaches, you don't think they'd find something? Why isn't the NFL releasing those other 600,000 emails? Why are we getting just this targeted hit on John Gruden? Like how, how does he get to be the, uh, the fall guy? What's going on with that? And I remember the New York Times was absolutely fine with the racist tweet sent out by its its uh, employee, Sarah Jong. Like, ho-hum. Well, who whom Because she was going after white people, it's fine. And uh, is it okay to mock people who have abnormally big lips? Like, why is that such a, such a horrible crime to mock someone for... for for having uh, big lips. A lot of good comments on uh, Steve Saylor's blog. So are we get now going to have a have a woman head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders or some other NFL team or at least a general manager or an assistant head coach. All right, so we can move beyond this sexism, misogyny. We need a woman head coach. 
you think uh, Randy Moss or Booger McFarland ever said anything that was like sexist or homophobic? So Deshaun Watson sexually assaulted 24 women? You have people playing in the NFL who have killed people? And why going through his emails from 10 years ago? If you went through anybody's private communications, would you not find things that would uh, shock contemporary sensibilities? So some people say the NFL has become rather gay because whenever the opposing team throws an incomplete pass within 10 years, within 10 yards of a defensive back, he does a celebration dance. So the NFL turns a blind eye to real harms done by their employees, such as Michael Vick, Ray Rice, O.J. Simpson, Aaron Hernandez. So what, what's really going on? So I wish John Gruden didn't apologize at all. He should have said, I have F you money, so F you. I guess some rival faction wanted to put John Gruden out so they could put their own guy in. So beating women and torturing dogs is okay if you want to make it in the NFL, but making mean comments about people who are black, gay, or women is forbidden. Yeah, the NFL has become full throttle workers. Of, like, why do we have a month of breast cancer awareness? I mean, frankly, I think every day should be about breast cancer awareness. And then why on earth did the Washington football team have sexual harassment of their cheerleaders? Like sexual harassment of women who get paid to shake their groove thing while partly dressed in front of tens of thousands of mostly male fans. Oh, the humanity. And uh, John Gruden called our president a nervous, clueless pussy. And remember, when he made these emails, he wasn't employed by the NFL. And he sent them from his private email address. Shouldn't they have paid for the blonde Facebook whistleblower to have a little jaw reduction plastic surgery before rolling her out? Yeah, she went after Facebook because uh, it was too open to vigorous debate. Ex-military dude says, Can I sue the United States government for the derogatory names I was called during basic training 40 years ago? Yeah, low-status males looking at women is considered harassment. Yeah, we've got this mysterious, sexy, instant media darling, brave whistleblower. Facebook over and over again has chosen profit over safety. And by safety, she means why isn't Facebook doing a better job of squelching vigorous discussion. She wants the federal government to impose regulations on social media. Yeah, so the NFL is going through 650,000 emails. This could be the Panama Papers of football. So what would happen if you did a thorough search of uh, smartphone texts by various NFL players? Do you think you'd find any homophobic or misogynistic content in there? High school football coaches everywhere tomorrow will be yelling in the faces of straight white kids, insulting, distressing, humiliating, and traumatizing them. That's their culture. That's the nature of the beast. Man, and Gruden also criticized President Obama during his re-election campaign in 2012. Yeah, Gruden should have hung tough, called for the release of all the NFL emails. I'm a free man. I like what I like. I don't like what I don't like. That goes for some people, some behavior, some of the nonsense of our time. I said what I said when I said it. If that's important, then let's get it all out there. The NFL should release all the emails from everyone. Players, coaches, team management, but especially Roger Goodell and all the suits and NFL broadcasters. Let's have transparency. So it's okay for the NFL to have murderers, rapists, girlfriend beaters, drug addicts, alcoholics... But don't dare criticize the commissioner or question his work agenda. 
So don't Raider fans aren't they Raider fans because they love bug culture? I mean, whenever you see a liquor store robbery in Southern California in closed circuit camera, there's always Raiders gear being worn by people committing the crime. What does Ron Un say? He says that COVID is the result of rogue elements of the US intelligence agencies. That they, they cooked up COVID. Insane. How come I don't do that many live streams anymore? I'm taking a break. I deserve to get away. I deserve to do other things with my life. Yeah, being called racist is the worst thing that can happen to you these days. So you got a homosexual serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer, who was much more concerned about being thought of as a racist than committing some of the most bizarre and shocking murders in history. History Cannibal, serial killer is fine, but racist equals bad. The QB bending over the center and placing his hands in the center's nether region in a pantomime of anal copulation doesn't get any daya, gaya. <laughs> yeah, the cool promise of email and general internet communications technologies is that we were supposed to be able to converse easily and casually without physical proximity. All right? But instead of being liberating, now search and retrieval means that we've unleashed the school moms, the lawyers, the commissars into every thought and utterance a man has. What was supposed to help liberate man has become a transfer of power from men and the productive to the unproductive and the tut tutters and the parasites. Yeah, when are we going to get those other 650,000 emails from the Washington football team investigation? So the league that hired O.J. Simpson, Aaron Hernandez, and Ray Lewis is concerned about offensive language in a coach's private emails. Yeah, when, when are we going to get a trove of emails sent by New York Times executives? At least John Gruden's emails are more entertaining than the normal coach speak. That we need to control the line of scrimmage, take care of the football, and establish the vertical threat. By the way, was there a trove of emails on Hunter Biden's laptop? Did the New York Times report on any possibly racist or insensitive or sexist or misogynistic or misanthropic content on Hunter's trove of emails? Did that trove of emails contain any whiff of corrupt payoffs? Did uh, Roger Goodell just want to get John Gruden because John Gruden's not with the work program? So Roger Goodell instructed NFL executives to look at more than 650,000 emails during the past few months, including those in which Gruden made offensive remarks. So nobody else made offensive remarks in that tranche, in that trove. So distressing this happens for the Las Vegas Raiders because Las Vegas is just known for its sensitivity, man. There's no homophobia or sexism there. I'm reading from the comments on Steve Saylor's blog. Yeah, so question the wisdom of recruiting female firefighters. Man, you're just relying on antiquated and discredited tropes, bro, about females lacking the physical strength of their male counterparts. Or maybe maybe John Gruden, you know, cautioned someone about venturing into a certain part of town. Maybe he employed age-old stereotypes about African-American and other communities of color being less safe than their white counterparts man too bad that John Gruden is not Hillary Clinton because then he could have had a team of interns review all his emails delete all the ones deemed problematic then print out the rest and submit them on paper to investigators 
Watching the breaking news coverage of this on Monday Night Football, you'd think someone just died. You got these former football players saying how they can't believe they ever played for this racist. Broadcaster saying that John Gruden committed the holy trinity of offense, racism, misogyny, LGBTQ denigration, and everyone nodding their heads in unison. No one questioning why these emails are just now released after a decade? Because of the investigation, the Washington Redskins uncovered these old emails? Or what about everyone else's emails? This, this seems like just the tip. Just the tip, as uh, Ron Jeremy would say. Now, John Gruden is gone, but maybe the NFL's troubles are just beginning, writes Sam Farmer in the Los Angeles Times. Well, how many more emails are out there? Like, what other NFL careers are on the line? Now, we didn't get to see the back and forth. We just got to see John Gruden's share of this conversation. So we've got 650,000 plus emails and uh, a summary of them was presented to Commissioner Roger Goodell and the Raiders last week. So emails, private emails sent a decade ago rose to the level of red alert. How many, how much more is out there? What else will be revealed? Hard to imagine any NFL team weathering this level of scrutiny unscathed. So well, two weeks ago, we saw Urban Meyer having a woman dance against him who was not his wife. She was grinding on him, a beautiful young woman, when he was supposedly spending more time with his family. So this John Gruden mess, says Sam Farmer, feels much more like the beginning than the end. So who did John Gruden piss off? The wrong person, obviously. That's his real sin, not writing naughty things in private. If you check the emails of everyone in the NFL since 2011, you'd find worse than John Gruden's comments. But my God, he said that a black man had lips like Michelin tires. Oh my God, just the worst. So someone responded to me on Twitter, I don't fear and hate strangers. Well, guess what? Everybody's got fear and hatred of strangers inside of them. It's just how deeply is it buried? Right? It's only a matter of how deeply is buried. We have an instinctive revulsion, loathing and fear and, and hatred of that which is different from us. Now, we are sufficiently educated and incentivized to try to repress this, but it's there inside of everyone. So I wonder if the, wonder if the Raiders will hire a woman. Perhaps, perhaps that's the... That's the only way they can atone. They, they need to hire a woman, homosexual, maybe a transsexual. We fear those who don't look like us. We fear those who don't believe like us. Like every disagreement puts strain on your relationship. So Laponius and I, we, we had a conflict about Air Supply. I said to Laponius, Air Supply is the greatest musical group in the history of the universe. And he disagreed. And it was really hard for me to talk to him for a few days afterwards because we had such a passionate disagreement over air supply. So even disagreeing about the merits of a song, the merits of a radio station, the merits of a sports team, that's going to put stress on your relationship, right? We feel most comfortable with those who are most like us. The more differences you have with other people, whether it's skin color, religion, sexual preference, it's just going to musical taste, sporting preferences, Income differential, the more differences, the more strain on the relationship. Yeah, we need a masculine presenting non-binary omnisexual Palestinian Latinx trans woman as the next Raiders coach. Then we can achieve peak workness. Yeah, thank God Laponius and I, we agreed to disagree about air supply and now we're just the best of buds. We got over it. We were all out of love. We were just lost without you. But here we are. What do I think about Rabbi Mizrahi and Rabbi Ruvain? I think they're, they're uh, quite... Uh, 
they're quite compelling, all right? Uh, it's, uh, it's low IQ content, but it's incredibly entertaining. So what do you guys think about John Gruden getting fired for logical song from Supertramp? Yeah, the questions run too deep. Good point. So what do you guys think about the, the firing of John Gruden for insensitive comments made 10 years ago? Yeah, brutish and compelling. That's a good way to describe Rabbis Ruvain and Mizrahi. Now, you don't personalize business. You don't criticize people personally in business, especially in writing. Yeah, words to live by. If I renounce my love of John Gruden, will I be free? I think he's going to coach again in the NFL. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. It just seems crazy on the face of it that we're canceling people over 10 year old private emails as refereed by the New York Times. All right, okay, these aren't tweets, these are private emails. But uh, once this stuff is out there, then a team and an owner has to act in its own self interest. And uh, the Raiders owner, Mark Davis got in, got in a little bit of trouble for posting a tweet. Now I can breathe, right after, after George Floyd died. So he died complaining, I can't breathe. Mark Davis appeared to mock him by saying, now I can breathe. Yeah, the, the New York Times makes it seem like John Gruden's ripping, just ripping on women, gays, and blacks. But when you see the actual transcript, you realize he was just using crass language. Somewhat like the shift from using the word prostitution to human trafficking. It just makes it seem so much work. So, do you think the emails of the Dark Lord Bill Belichick are getting scrutinized? Bye-bye.